Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Jim Hoffman. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is Friday. It is time for our daily devotion, and I want to invite you to come and join me as we gather together to spend a couple of moments in devotion with one another. We're going to pause and center ourselves on God's presence in our lives today. As you join, if you would leave a quick comment and say hello, I would appreciate you doing that. It's always nice to see your comments, to see your uh, your greetings. And so, of course, Facebook's going to tell me who's here. It is kind enough to do that most of the time. But if you would just say hello, that would be, be great. Got to get my Bible out. Turn a few pages in here so I can find our reading for today. Good morning, Linda and Finn. Glad the two of you are here. Good morning, Jack and Pat. And good morning, Barb and Chris Mueller. Glad that you are all here today. My dog is here with me, as you can well tell. Barky little thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So today we are going to be reading, by the way, from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Jack and Pat, you are not late. I have not actually started. <laughs> I was a couple minutes late. But 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Just why? Uh, just looking to see if anybody else um, says good morning. So that's the pause for a second. I look, uh, went outside today. Had to take Margaret to a doctor's appointment. There's white stuff out there. I thought winter was going to come back around and get us for a moment. You know. So here we go. Good old winter. Hello, Susan. Good morning to you. It is only the middle of February, so, you know, it's the 16th. Uncle Bill, good morning to you, William. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. Those of you curious, we have someone on here, William, uh, Bill Schaefer. Bill is my uncle on my mom's side, one of my mom's younger brothers. He lives in the Dallas, Texas area, so it's always good to have him on here. He's pretty regular at being with us. So good to see you, Bill. Again, friends, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. I'm anticipating we'll probably have a couple other folks that will pipe in and join us here and say good morning, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Our opening prayer comes from words of worship, it is a prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Hey, Stacy, good morning to you. We're going to be reading out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 to 21. This is 16 to the end of the chapter. So, we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old person is gone, and a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Paul's language. 
Paul used the metaphor. Paul uses the metaphorical "we" by the chance. He's talking about himself, but he uses "we" a lot in his language. Our devotion writer today is Wee um, Moo's Wee Mu Yang, and Wee is from uh, South Korea. And the focus verse comes out of Luke chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four. The father said, "The son is my, the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found." So they began to celebrate. Now, you might recognize that as the father in the prodigal son story who said that. That's from Luke chapter 15, verse 24. Here is Wee's um, devotion for today. Graduating from university, studying abroad, earning a PhD, striving to be a good Christian, everything was going smoothly. However, at times I had experienced ups and downs. I worked days and nights without a break, repeatedly meeting with failures, and I became depressed. Eventually, I moved to a small town where I began to work for a kimchi manufacturing company. I felt like I was starting from nothing. A PhD student working in a kim kimchi factory. Because I was, I am clumsy and was inexperienced in manual labor, I often received criticism from my coworkers. All I could do was pray. I was weary from my repeated failures, but the Lord welcomed me with open arms, even though I had lived like the prodigal son for decades. From that time, my life was changed. My thinking became peaceful and positive. I praised more and felt more gratitude. And when faced with a false accusation, I was able to smile and carry on. These changes resulted from the love and acceptance of the Lord. No matter what we do, the Lord embraces us. Jesus came to save sinners, and he looks for every lost sheep until he finds it. Those who wander away from the Lord can always come back. The Lord welcomes everyone with open arms. So the thought for the day is, I will look for Jesus as eagerly as he looks for me. I don't know if you've ever had a time in your life where you've been a prodigal. Uh, some of us are quite familiar with that. We know what it is to, to be a prodigal. Uh, we know what it is to to have moments in our lives where where we feel like we um, maybe just don't want to believe in the moment. Um, faith isn't necessarily all that important to us. We've got other things on our agenda or on our minds. Or you know, like me, I I grew up in the church uh, for the most part. Got to a point pretty close to my senior year of high school and thought, you know, is there anything else out there? You know, so I, I kind of had my prodigal moment in my life. Some of you may have never experienced that. Mary Broom never even thought about it, right? And 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 certainly I would I would applaud you for being able to stay consistent in your faith. Uh, not all of us have been able to do that. And yet, even though we may find ourselves being consistent in our church attendance and periodically thinking about what that means and, and as an example of being a quote-unquote good Christian, uh, we don't always have the same level of faith. I'm not sure our faith is always uh, solid and on uh, firm ground all throughout our lives. I think there's moments where things come and, and we question some things. And we might question even God. You know, uh, I think about the story. I've been listening again to uh, the Bible in the Year podcast, uh, which is Father Mike Schmitz's podcast. Um, I'm, you know, I, I picked it up again and started the year over, finished last year and listened to the whole thing. And started it over and you know you, you find yourself in the middle of the Exodus story uh, the people are at the base of, of Mount Sinai and and Moses has been up on the mount way too long listening to the instructions of God and receiving the Ten Commandments and so the people get restless and they create an idol they have Aaron fashion and a golden calf and that becomes the image for the God that liberated them you know we have moments I think in our lives where you know, we're still faithful in some ways. We have faithful practices, but but our faith itself may be a little bit weak, may not be as deep as we want it to be. And so in some ways, we are prodigals as well. You don't have to just simply walk away from the church and cast off your religiosity to be a prodigal. You can be a prodigal sitting on the pew every single Sunday because you may not necessarily feel the depth of faith and belief that God would hope and wants to inspire in you. And yet there is always that welcome of God. There is always God who is present with us 
in our Lord and Savior and in the power of the Spirit beckoning us, calling us. There is always that presence of God trying to figure out how to draw us closer into relationship with. It's kind of like your kids, you know? Your, I, I mean, my kids, I always wanted them to be, I wanted them to be close. I wanted to have a close relationship with them. I loved it when I could just sit with one of them um, on the couch and they just kind of snuggle. It's the same thing with my grandkids, you know? My grandsons when they were younger and now my two little granddaughters. And I just like it when they, when they come and they just, they want to hug you. They want to just kind of lean into you. They want to snuggle with you. God wants that kind of relationship with us as well. For us to rely upon God as our heavenly parent in a way in which that relationship deepens and grows. And because of that, our faith grows as well. So think about where you might be at the moment. You know, if you put yourself on a couch with God, are you, are you sitting at opposite ends playing on your cell phones? There's an image we all get, right? Or do you find yourself maybe sitting next to each other, a little closer to each other? You know, maybe having a conversation over something. Or you could be like many. You might find yourself right in the bosom of God, leaning against God, uh, building that deep and intimate relationship. I, you know, no matter where you are, you're still on the couch with God. And God welcomes you there. And God wants you there. So let's take a moment to pause and pray. Friends, so gracious God, thank you for waiting for us and forgiving our sins. Draw us closer to you and may all people recognize your love and may they eventually turn to you as well. We pray this in Christ. Amen and amen. Well, great to see you all this morning. By the way, good morning, Barbara Paddock. Great to have you. Mr. Shoemate, good to see you this morning. I'm so glad that you are here as well. Great to see all of you. Thanks for shopping, uh, stopping by, shopping. Eh. Thanks for stopping by today for our devotion time. It's always great to have you. I appreciate your faithfulness in this. I want to invite you to come and join us again tomorrow for our devotion time. I got to call Allie. I forgot to talk to her, but I need her to do the devotion tomorrow, so she'll be our host. I have a funeral in the morning in Lawrence, Kansas, and then have to Try to figure out how to eventually make my way up to North Kansas City for um, a visitation for my first cousin Amy's wife, Julie, who was the one that was in a car accident a week ago. Uh, actually, it's been a week ago, this Friday night. So um, be in prayer for my family, if you would, please. I would appreciate that. I want to encourage you to take a moment to pause and pray for one another. Don't forget, I'm praying for you as well. I appreciate your prayers. After we're done, feel free to share with uh, one another uh, your this devotion. Put it on your own Facebook page if you would like. Maybe one of your family and friends will stop by and join us for our devotion time. Again, if you are someone that watches this later, don't forget, leave a quick comment and say hello. I would also appreciate you doing that. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Friday. I'm praying that God's grace and peace be upon you. Look forward to being back with you again. And don't forget, worship on Sunday. Come and join us. We'll be here 8.30 in the chapel, 10.45 in the sanctuary and online. Uh, I hope you'll take a moment to come and, and join us for worship. Otherwise, God's peace be with you. Thanks, friends.